ON10 P42 question 10. This is our starter to help us understand uh, ultrasound reflection a little bit better. First one, state what is meant by acoustic impedance of a medium. This is our Z. And you got to remember Z is density of a medium times the speed of that wave. So we're going to use that as our definition. So you can say that this is the product. Product means multiplier. So product of medium density, density of some medium, uh, that will be the rho times, what is the C? Not speed of light, speed of the wave through that medium. Ah, so we're going to say that speed of wave through medium. Okay, this is two marks here. I guess sometimes it's two marks, sometimes it's one. It's very inconsistent one. You just make sure you write everything. Uh. But the important thing here is they want you to say is speed of wave. Other than that, product of me, uh, density and speed. That's the main idea. Okay, sometimes it's two marks, sometimes it's one. Make sure you can write this whole sentence. So now they give us uh, data for some media. Many medium we call media. Okay, media is not like movie or uh, video. Many medium is called media. So each medium, okay, air, gel, soft tissue, bone, got all this speed. Uh, this is our C and our acoustic impedance Z. Use the data to calculate a value for density of bone. So we want to find our rho for bone. So we can use our equation z equals to rho c. Uh, and then what do we use? Ah? Bone. Ah? Where's bone? Oh, bone. So we're going to use all these values to plug in for our value. So pause the video, try it out if you haven't. Then you can come back and check if you manage to get this whole, whole question actually, if you can do it without much guidance. Okay, let's, let's do some substitution to see if you manage to get it correct. So 7.0 times 10 to the 6 equals to some density of bone. I don't know what that is, but I know the speed of ultrasound is 4100. And that would give me a density of bone of about 1707 kg per meter cube. Final answer, I guess I could do 2SF because here is 2SF. About 2SF. Okay, la, pretty safe. 2SF. 1700. I just A1 mark only. La. Just use the equation. Can ready. Okay, next one. Oh, here we go to this. A parallel beam come in. So incident intensity is the one on the left side. Comes in. Right angle. Okay, so come in normal to the boundary. Between two media. So some amount is going to be transmitted. Some amount will be reflected back once you hit the boundary. So the media have acoustic impedance, Z1, Z2, they told us already. Uh, and they tell us all these things. Say the relationship between, a uh, relation between I, I, T, and I, R. How do intensities relate? So just now, in the earlier theory video, we mentioned that when you come in with a certain intensity, let's say I come in with 100%, also known as I, then some portion will be transmitted. Maybe like, I, I'm just going to say 50% of I goes through. So that would be um, half I, I suppose. But where, where did the other half go? Reflected, no? So this one is another 50% of I reflected. So this will be another half I coming out. So this one is the sum. 50 plus 50 is 100. So IR plus IT. Kind of conservation of energy. La. You come in with a certain energy, half go through, the other half reflect back. Think of it that way. So this one is B1 just for you. Ding, ding. Next. Ooh, this equation looks familiar. The reflection coefficient is given by this. They gave it to us. Very nice. Use the data to determine the reflection coefficient for the boundary. So this coefficient alpha can only use at boundary between, what are we looking at? Gel and soft tissue. Mm, okay, I guess we could we could draw a picture if you want to. Let's try that. So we have some gel and we have some soft tissue. What color is tissue? I, I put, I don't know, I'm just going to put this as gel. And on one side we have some soft tissue. I guess I'll put a pink. Yeah, I don't know what soft tissue that is though. So there we go. A boundary between two different uh, mediums. So this side is gel, this side is soft tissue. And we want to find alpha. So we need to know what is the Z of both of them. 
So if you look at your table, gel and tissue are, are here. Gel is 1.5, tissue 1.6. Well, very close. Ah. Okay, so we're going to use that as our calculation. Substitute inside here. So using the equation that they give to us, the Z2 minus Z1, we're going to sub everything in. So I'm just going to put 1.6 times 10 to the 6 minus 1.5 times 10 to the 6 squared. Now, which one comes first doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, you're going to square them. So you're just finding the difference. So it doesn't matter if you get a negative number inside there or not. Down there, you add both of these numbers together, both acoustic impedance together. So quite okay. Huh? You press our calculator, 1.5 times 10 to the 6 squared. This one will give you a very, very, very small number, 0 0.00104. Okay, I think this is a good start. Let's write down the answer. Uh, how many SF should I write? 0 0.001. I feel very scared. It's one SF only. Eh. But all the values I used to calculate got two SF. So maybe to be safe, I put one zero. Although the mask scheme just puts 0 0.001. So anyway, this is A1. You substitute correctly in the equation. That's another mark. Now, before we go on, what does this number tell us again? Ah? Can remember ah? This alpha is very small number, 0 0.001, it's almost zero. So this tells me that there is a very small reflected intensity. In other words, you can say it's high transmission. Most of the wave will go through. So if you have an incoming wave here, Ah, let's use blue for all our waves then. Incoming wave come here. Most of it would go through. Maybe a little bit will get reflected. Most of it will go through. High transmission. Small intensity reflected. Remember this is the refraction coefficient. Let's do it again for the next one. Between air and soft tissue. So I'm going to redraw this again. Make a guess. What do you think is going to happen when you send an ultrasound wave or any kind of wave? Uh, longitudinal wave of the type come in wow air what do you think is going to happen once it hits that boundary well we got to do the same calculation alpha is going to be well what is air and tissue air air air, air. ah air is 4.3 times 10 to the 2 so we're going to write that down in our calculation and do the exact same steps like that so let's go down here plug in the equation I'm just going to put 4.3 which is air Minus 1.6 times 10 to the 6 squared. So, divide by both acoustic impedances add together. Plus 1.6 times 10 to the 6 squared. This one will give me a very big number, 0 0.9989. Um, I could round this off to, I guess, 1.0. They didn't specify how many SF I want, so I'm going to keep my 2 SF. That's really big. One is the highest you can go, pretty much. So that is two marks only, a uh, one mark only. Uh, yeah. What does this tell me compared with the one above? Just now, when it's very small, we say small reflected high transmission. Now it's the other way around. It's a very big number. So what that tells me is there is a large reflected intensity. Because large reflection coefficient. Large reflected intensity. And maybe a little bit managed to get through. So small or low transmission. Let's use that word. Low transmission. Aha. Uh -huh. So that means most of this wave will just go boing and then bounce back out of the tissue. And only a little bit will make it through and go into the tissue. That's not... I mean... It's it's not ideal if you want to scan all the stuff under the tissue because everything has just bounced off. You look at the comparison between these two. <laughs> if you put gel and tissue, okay lah, quite good. A lot of it go in. It is a transmitted. But then, down there, if it's just air and tissue, the transmitted is like little bit, most of it all bounced back, reflected back. So that's a problem in medical imaging. When you're trying to use ultrasound, if you put air and then put on your skin, the tissue it all bounce back. How do we fix this problem? Here's the solution. We are going to put gel on the skin. I mean, we just look at gel, right? See the gel? 
We use gel. That's why I put gel. So by reference to your answers, explain the use of a gel on the surface of skin during an ultrasound diagnosis. In case you haven't seen this before, it can look something like this. Lah. So before you take an ultrasound in any part of the body, you might see them put some gel either on the skin or a gel on the, 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 the transducer itself. And the reason for this gel okay, is to change the acoustic impedance. Have to do with the acoustic impedance. And the purpose is they want to reduce the reflection coefficient at boundary. You don't want so much to reflect, ma. you want the ultrasound to go inside the skin. You see the skin, but because of air to tissue, very large difference in their acoustic impedance. So you put gel, and gel, you can see the calculations we did, would be a much better boundary, a uh, skin gel boundary, when you want to send the waves in. So let's describe this in a sentence. Okay, how to explain? Explain, why use gel? Ah? We did the calculation above, now we got to explain it. So we can say that there is very... Huh, everything I already write here in the green colour is your answer already. Mm, if got if got no gel... Uh, if got gel, small reflected high transmission. If no gel straight away from air go into tissue, large reflected low transmission, not good. We want the ultrasound to actually go into the body. So we're going to say, firstly, that there is a... There is... Very little transmission, if no gel. Ah. Very little transmission. Or you can say a major reflection. Most of it reflected. At the air skin boundary. And this is what we call the case when there is no gel. No use of gel when you're trying to get ultrasound scan. Air skin boundary. Okay. Uh, so when we put the gel, what happens? We're going to talk about that in the next part. So when the gel is added here, added to the skin or between the skin and the transducer, then you have almost complete transmission. See? One le, eh, not one. Z almost zero le. So there is almost no reflection at all. So almost complete transmission in other words you can say there is little to no reflection hmm. quite useful if you want to send waves into the body uh, at where what boundary oh these are only at boundaries oh. so at the gel skin boundary Now, when this occurs, this, this whole gel usage only happens if you want to send a wave from outside into the body, from air into the body. So we got to also mention that. Because once it's in the body, it's just going through bone, na, vein, na, muscle, fat, everything. But from outside to the body, so we're going to say that. Uh, so when gel, gel is added, almost complete transmission at gel skin boundary, when this is the wave travels... When the wave travels in or out of body. Okay, this is the important part. Only in or out of body, then we use gel. Okay, three marks here. I just kind of split it up for you. This is M1, this is M1, and this is also A1. If you are wondering, uh, why only when you're going in or out of body? Because that is when there is air. When one side, the air, is the medium. Because remember, we look at all the other possible medium. Ah. Where's the medium? Ah, L, G, tissue, ah, bone. Ah. You see, they are pretty similar. 10 to the power of 6, 10 to the power of 6, 10 to the power of 6. Only air ah, is very low impedance. So that's why air is a problem generally when you're trying to do ultrasound. And that's why we must put gel when you want to send waves into the body. And I think that's all for this first stop to hopefully help you understand a little better how reflection and transmission works when you're trying to send waves into a different medium, such as the body from air. So that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next section where we'll look at absorption, attenuation, and more examples. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.